Hey guys, welcome back to Judo Highlights. So there's only been six Olympic champions at under 81s. For the Sydney Olympics in 2000, they changed up the weight categories. 81 used to be 70 and then 78 kgs. So 2000, a nice starting point. We'll go through all the champions from the year 2000 onwards. I'm sure you know some of them. One I didn't know in particular, and it's this guy here, Takimoto. And he's actually facing Koga Toshihiko in this clip. He actually lost his match. Koga was a bit more aggressive. But anyway, Takimoto taking gold at the Sydney Olympics. Obviously, we don't have a lot of access to the Olympic footage. I will try to show you as much as I can in this video. But he had a lightning fast Tayotoshi, as you see here. And the last thing I'll say about him is he's the only guy who I've ever seen survive a Kanibasami. Have a look at this. He just flips out of it. His opponent still getting an Ippon for it. But still, this is amazing to escape this, this throw here without an injury. Unbelievable. So after Sydney, four years later, we found ourselves in Athens for the 2004 Olympics in Greece. Obviously, I'm sure you know this guy, Ilias Iliadis, one of the greatest judoka to ever compete on the tatami. And one of his achievements, of course, has been the youngest male judoka to take gold. Only 17 years old when he did this. You can tell, I mean, his Olympic footage compared to all of his other footage, just he looks like a totally different person. 17 years of age when he did this. Absolutely incredible. Now, apparently there's a North Korean, Yi Sun Hui, who is apparently the youngest judoka to ever win a gold medal. Apparently she was 16 years of age when she took out Ryoko Tamura, but I got a cool BS on this. The Wikipedia still says they're looking for sources. I mean, these North Koreans probably just made up her age. Who knows? How do these North Koreans even compete and find time to train? It's beyond me. Anyway, Iliadis, one of the superstars of judo. I'm sure a lot of people, especially my generation, kind of looked up to him, started judo because of him. I mean, when you see stuff like this, it was just absolutely inspiring. Now, surprisingly, you would think Iliadis winning a gold at 17, he would go on and win more golds, but that wasn't the case. Three world championship golds, but only the one Olympic gold, a bronze at London. So after him, it was Ole Bischoff. And Ole Bischoff, he's one of the only people you can go onto YouTube and you can find better footage of his Olympic highlights than just his regular matches on the IJF tour. So at the Olympics, he had some absolutely legendary matches against some legendary judoka, one of them being Kim Jai Bum. And these two just went back and forth between 2008 and 2012 at the Beijing Olympics and at the Olympics in London. So Ole Bischoff, he took gold at 2008, winning against Kim in the final. And the two of them, they switched positions for London Kim taking the gold, Ole Bischoff taking a silver. But I also really recommend going and watching Travis Stevens versus Ole Bischoff at the 2012 London Olympics. Absolutely insane match. Now, I watched the whole thing yesterday and I really just couldn't understand why three flags went to Ole Bischoff. You know, back then the rules were different. I've totally forgotten the rules of the time. The judo was much more punchy as well. The grips, just breaking them off left, right and center makes you really appreciate the rules that we've got now. But anyway, Oli Bischoff taking gold at the Beijing Olympics at 81. And then it was Kim's turn. Now Kim, if you know me, I love Nagase. And back in the day, I really loved Kim as well. I made a video called Kim J. Bum, Judo Legend. More people should go and check out that video. His judo is absolutely incredible. You know, if you go onto Wikipedia and have a look at his record, a lot of gold. This guy, he didn't come out to take second or third place. But when he did, he usually took gold. And that was the case at the Olympics in 2012 in London. But here's some of the footage from the Olympics. And speaking of Olympic footage, I heard from Shuddy the other day that he actually got in contact with someone at the Olympics and, and was looking at using their footage. Apparently it costs like $2,000 a minute. So I don't know why this stuff here that I'm showing you is somehow flying under the radar. Maybe because it's from a Korean TV show. But anyway, it's, it's just ridiculous that we don't have easy access to this footage. So this final, I mean, Kim, he just absolutely dominated. Absolutely incredible Ochigari. Kim, I really looked up to him for his Ochigari. One of the best to ever do it. And then four years later in Rio, we had Karl Mazayev from Russia. Now the footage I'm showing you here, I don't even remember making this video. I was thinking the other day, man, I, I should probably make a video on Karl Mazayev because he's Olympic champion. And I was just like, man, I don't really know a lot about this guy. Now he fought Travis Stevens in the final. 
at the Rio Olympics. And I think Travis would be kicking himself over this mistake here. Going for some kind of mat return. Doesn't get it. Puts himself in a vulnerable position. Perfect for the Uchimata. And Kalmazayev, I mean, he's so good at that technique. It was just going to be a score. Now, obviously, my man Nagate, he took a bronze at Rio. That was disappointing. I did cry a few tears over that one. But he came back. Tokyo Olympics. Taking gold there. And had to go through some pretty tough competition. Here he is against Cass. This Kochi. I'm really surprised Cass didn't get that Kochi there. But yeah, going back to 2016, he ended up meeting someone called Sergio Toma from the UAE. And that was just a really weird fight. Nagase ended up losing on Cheetos. Nothing, nothing was happening. It was a really odd fight. I can't find it anywhere. I did watch it live. But if, if you have access to that, go watch it. It's just an odd fight. So Nagase losing out at Rio and then he came back and did it in Tokyo. Went through Cass and then ended up fighting Said Molai in the final. I wasn't sure if these two had met heading into the final. And I was a little bit worried about this kind of matchup for Nagase. But he just dominated the grips. Got a really good throw in. Wasn't an Ippon but a really nice Seu Otoshi. Nagase used to do that in his earlier years. We hadn't seen it much but... He brought it back, brought it back for the Olympics, and he is our most recent Olympic champion. So that's it guys, there's your six Olympic champions, all the way back to 2000 in Sydney. So who do you think is going to be next? That's the big question at Paris. I have another video on that one day. So like and subscribe, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.